I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to talk about the modulation system in M Sound Factory. And in fact, there's actually two modulation systems. So if you've used Melda plugins before, you're probably used to this one. So you see here where it says Mod 1. You can use this and attach it to any parameter or even multi-parameter. So I can click Clear and Learn, move the semitones like this, turn it off. And by clicking here, I can turn it on. And you see, oh, it's kind of moving in a strange way. And now you see it's set, set to a step sequencer. If I turn this down, see it's moved to a sine wave. I can, of course, control how far it goes, the range, and etc. I can set it to the step sequencer. Uh, so all these things I probably showed before regarding the LFOs. You can set it to an envelope or set it to move randomly. If I use LFO modulation etc. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this and there's this is useful but actually this would probably be my you know plan B as far as modulation goes. So it works but one of the problems with it is it's not per voice. You're probably thinking okay what, what do you mean by per voice? Per voice means that each note you play will be affected in a unique way. So if I play a chord like C, E, and G, using this modulation system here, all of them will be treated the same. So the semitones, if it moves up five semitones, the C will move up five semitones, the E will move up five semitones, and the G will move up five semitones. But using these per voice modulation sources, I could have the C move up two uh, voices or two semitones, the E move up. Uh, five semitones and the G move up 10 semitones for example and so this allows lots of interesting and unique possibilities so that's why I prefer using this in the per voice modulation sources the only downside to this is you can't use these on the multi parameters so kind of keep that in mind and also these here the mod ones they don't work with the uh, MP uh, e well so if you're using like a MP control like a Rolly Seaboard these aren't gonna work but these will so that's just something to kind of keep in mind here so let me try to show you how this works and how you can do some more advanced modulation things with M sound factory so you see here I have a normal saw wave okay and I have another oscillator here uh, sounds like this So if people are wondering, like, hey, I want, like, I think it sounds too sharp in M Sound Factory. I don't like the crisp, sa crisp sound. You can always import your own uh, wave file. So here's a different saw as compared to the factory. If you want to just change the factory so it sounds a little bit different, there's ways you can do that, like going into here. Let's adjust the skew a little bit like this. So this is normal. Okay, just this. And then the smoothness. So it's a little bit smoother if that's what you like, and it's a little bit you know bassier and not so top heavy. So of course you can do that. That's not really related to modulation, but <laughs> I thought maybe some people would find that useful. Anyway, moving on. Let's look at how it works. So let's adjust the sense. Let's make a, a vibrato. So you see here, there's two ways I can do it. I can either click this little block here and this opens up, or I can attach it directly by just going here where it sees the pointer, where it has the pointer, and I just drag this over to this box. You see it kind of blinks, let go, and it adjusts it for me. And so it's already set up. Okay, so if I go in here and I press the key, have LFO one working and so that's good and if I click this button here you see oh okay I can adjust the rate so make it slower so I like it about like five or so that sounds good but and I can also adjust the depth here so if I want this to have more vibrato And also remember this can be adjusted here inside the LFO. And the great thing about using it here inside the LFO as opposed to using the depth is I can actually modulate the level if I want. 
So from here, let's say, okay, this is good, but I don't want it to be on all the time. One thing I can do is just attach the modulation wheel. And so now you see this is multiplied by this. So if I turn my modulation wheel down, you don't hear anything. So you can see here, this will show you a visual indication and you can also see the visuals here. And if I turn the mod wheel up, So, of course, that's great, but one thing I noticed when I did that, it seems like the modulation wheel is moving quickly from nothing to all the way up, and I don't want that. And I think, how can I fix that? And if you notice this button here, what is this? Click it, and it has a transformation shape. I enable it, and now I can see on here what the transformation is. So now it's just linear. So you can see that little line, that's where my modulation wheel is. If I move it up here, it'll quickly go to 100%. But what I want is I want the opposite. So let's pull it down here to this. So now this should give us a little bit more range and more throw on our modulation wheel. So that's what I want. So that's one way you can use this transformation. There's other things I can do with it. Uh, also, you see this, this is just the reverse button. So now I'm moving my mod wheel up. Does that hit the reverse? So now when I move the mod wheel down, it's going to increase the amount of vibrato. So it's just a simple reverse button. You can play with that if you want. Uh, so you think, okay, that's cool, but what about some of the other stuff? Let's say if I wanted to, for example, instead of using multiply here, let's say I want to do addition. So now when I have it all the way down, the LFO is still going to play. So let me move the depth down a little bit so you can see this. So if you watch here, you can see what's happening. Uh, if I have it all the way down, the LFO still plays. But as I move the modulation wheel up, it adds the modulation to it so it goes even higher. And I can do this similar, uh, I can do a similar thing using this. This will subtract it. So now it's here at 100%, I have the modulation wheel down. And then as I increase the modulation wheel, it will decrease the amount of LFO. I'm sorry, I should explain that it decreases the range of the LFO, so you get an idea. And there's other things too I can do with the minimum and maximum. So there's lots of things you can do with that. Also, you can do this, a similar thing if you want to do the addition by adding up these columns A, B, and C. So we'll do something similar there. And I like to keep it on multiply for this, but let's say if I wanted to do something just a little bit different. Let's say I don't want to control by that. Let's say I want to control by an envelope so it, the LFO fades in. All I have to do is just create an envelope here. I'll turn this off. Now I'll go into the envelope and think, okay, have it here an attack. I have sustain here. So it's going to start very low in level and then gradually increase. So let's move it down. It should sound like this. That's cool. And I can even add a modulation wheel afterwards like this so if I have the modulation wheel all the way down but then I can move it up and I can play with it like that and another thing I might want to add is I think okay this is good but what if I want the speed to increase over time I can go into here and use the rate like this, open this up, and I'll use LFO1 to control the rate. Uh, in this case, let me think, how should I do this? Maybe here just a little bit, and 
Ah, uh, that's gonna be backwards. Like this. Always get confused sometimes about which way <laughs> these things go. So maybe here. So let's try this. So I have it in the negative and I have it in reverse, so it should move from the bottom up to here. Let's hear what this sounds like. That's good, but it's a little bit too much. Let me move it up a little bit. So you can see the speed gradually increases. So as you can tell here, by mo using multiples of these together, you can create all sorts of interesting and new sounds. There's other ways to do this. So I showed how you could do this with this, but to be honest, a lot of this stuff you could probably use with just one multi-parameter. So let me, not multi-parameter, one modulation source. So if I just use envelope one here, I can open this up and you see where it has tremolo here. I can do this here. So around like five, I guess it was, move my tremolo and let's see how this sounds. So that's, you're getting a similar effect, although the pitch is gradually rising. So you can choose whichever one of these you prefer. So there's lots of things you can do with this. And you can even go into this tremolo here and do all the LFO stuff. So there's lots of different options with this. Don't think it's just, oh, this is just a basic uh, uh, ADSR, because it's not. There's more things you can do with it. Even in the custom shape, I can control the attack and draw it however I want, or the release and do the same thing there if I want. So there's all sorts of things we can do with this and then adjust the tremolo here. So it's almost like a draw, drawable envelope. Actually, it is a, a drawable envelope. And I can right click here, go into drawing mode and actually draw it. Ooh, see, it's fun. So <laughs> have fun with that if you want. There's lots of things you can do with that, but hopefully I've explained what you can do as far as this goes. Uh, let's try something else. And if you're wondering, like, how do I turn this off? Just click Control and then click on this, and it just turns it off. Let me show a few more things here. I want to show the random feature. So if I go into here and click one of these where it says Note Random, be careful because there's LFO Random and Note Random. So Note Random here, and just set this to, let's say, like 10%. If I hit this, it's going to sound like I'm sorry. So what it's going to do is it's just going to hit a different note each time. It's going to move the semitones around randomly. And let's say I want to do the same thing with this other oscillator. I can just click copy here. Go into the semitones here. Hit paste. And now when I play them, They're moving together, but you notice like the volume's way down, and the reason that is is because they're like phase canceling each other out, which I I don't want. And you think, well, why are they moving the same way? They're random. So what note random does is it chooses a random number and then it assigns it to every single source that's using note random one. But if I don't want that, I want each source to be random and different. What I can do is just choose true random like this. And I have that set, and let's copy this back to the first one. Paste. So now when I play them, it sounds like this. So if you're wondering what's the difference between random and true random, that's what it is. And there's times when I'd want to use one versus the other, so now you have an idea of when you might want to do that. Uh, let me show you a few other things. So here, what I have is just a string module. So, so here's the resonator and here's the exciter. Just doing sine wave ramping down here. I showed this in the physical modeling video. So if you don't know what that is, check that out. Uh, and so what I want to do here is kind of imitate a up and down pluck. So what I did here was this. I used flip-flop. Turn this off for now. And what flip-flop will do is it modulates between 
0 and whatever this depth knob is set to. And instead of doing a random uh, note between it, it just goes from 0 to negative 35 like this. All right, I don't flip-flop 2, so let's try flip-flop 1. So you see it's moving between those two values. If I have it on flip-flop 2, like this, every two notes it'll change. Like that. And flip-flop 4 will do the same. And one thing I wanted to do with this was choose note random here. And I'm modulating this with that. And so now, instead of going to negative 35 every time, it'll go between 0 and somewhere between negative 35 and 0, like this. And I think, OK, that's cool, but the effect is a little bit too much. I don't want it quite that random. So I can choose, turn this from 100 down to, let's say, 50. And now it'll be a little bit less random. So now I'm getting some variation, but it's not quite so much like it was. So for me, this is better. So that's another thing you can do with this. And this is actually a new modulator that wasn't in there before. OK, let's go to another one. So I'll probably show this before. It's like this, the synth strings. So I'm moving this using the mod wheel. So let me show you what I have here, where it says controller. I can choose between four different controllers, mod wheel, timbre, breath, and expression. And let's use control, alt, click. I can open it up and you think, what is this? Generate filter one filter frequency mod. What, what is this doing? So let's look in here and see what the filter is doing. So if I open this up, you see, instead of doing it across, I'm using it in columns. So A is the modulation wheel, B is timbre, breath control, expression. But if you look here, it says 100%. So when I have it on uh, mod wheel control, it's using the mod wheel at 100%. But if I move the controller to timbre, now it's using timbre, mod wheel is at 0%. Now it's a breath controller. If I move the controller again, it says expression. So I can switch between these different MIDI controllers like this if I want. So I can have them controlled between uh, different uh, MIDI CCs. And so this is really useful, at least for me. So this might be something that's helpful for you. So uh, keep that in mind. And also I showed you these, these transformations. So that's cool for each of these, but you can also do the same thing in general up here. So this is one for all of them put together. So you can use that also. And let me show you one more thing. Okay, so you see here, this is the wavetable module I have three wave, wave tables here. Let me turn the unison off for now. And I need to hook up a LFO for this. Let's say I want to make like a evolving pad. So use LFO one. Now I have the depth at 100%. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so you see it just moves between those. Nothing that interesting. They're basic waves. But let's say I wanted to do something so each wave is moving slightly differently. So what I can do here is take this LFO and let's go into this and look at the rate. So let's say I want the each one of the notes to move at a slightly different rate. So one thing I might want to do is change the initial phase so they don't all start at uh, the same point here. They, one maybe starts in the middle, one starts at the end, etc. And then let's change the rate here. So I click here, and let's say I want this to be controlled by the key scale. Okay, and I'm going to adjust this. So this is probably the lowest note I would play, so I cut this off. And this is a linear scale, but let's I want it to be a little bit more dramatic. Let's say like this. Okay, and I'll do it with single notes first so you can hear what the difference is. So if I play a low note like this. So you see it's moving kind of slow, but let's say I play a higher note like this. You can hear that's much faster. So when I play a chord, 
each note in the chord will be moving slightly uh, faster. The higher notes will be moving slightly faster. So it should sound like this. So you can hear them all moving, you know, at their own pace. Let me move the rate down just a little bit. Okay. And now if I turn on this, the unison, should have an interesting sound, I hope. So this is cool for evolving paths. This is kind of a basic wavetable, but if you use a more interesting wavetable, you can get even more interesting sounds. Of course, you could use filters with this. You could do the same tricks with a filter. Uh, you could also use it with any of these effects here. So you could do it with a chorus or a delay and make each uh, note have a different delay time. So you can do all sorts of creative things with this. But I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can use modulation and how to use the modulation system in M Sound Factory. But if you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Until next time, see you.